Pierre de Fermat was a French lawyer who lived from 1601 to 1665. Although he was a lawyer, he loved mathematics, number theory in particular. One of his more famous results is now called Fermat's Little Theorem. Fermat's Little Theorem says that if P is a prime number, and P does not divide the integer A, then A to the P minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod P. Let's see some examples so you get a feel for what this theorem is actually saying. Consider the case where P equals 5. 5 is prime. Then 5 doesn't divide 2, so 2 to the 5 minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod 5, or 2 to the 4th is congruent to 1 mod 5. So if you divide 2 to the 4th by 5, you'll get a remainder of 1. Similarly, P does not divide 3, so 3 to the 4th is congruent to 1 mod 5. P does not divide 4, so 4 to the 4th is congruent to 1 mod 5. Now P does divide 5, so the theorem does not apply in this case. And in fact, 5 to the 4th is congruent to 0 mod 5. Let's keep going. 5 does not divide 6, so 6 to the 4th is congruent to 1 mod 5. We can use Fermat's little theorem here. 5 and 7 are relatively prime, so 7 to the 4th is congruent to 1 mod 5. Similarly, 8 to the 4th is congruent to 1 mod 5. 9 to the 4th is congruent to 1 mod 5. Now we get to 10. Once again, 10 and 5 are not relatively prime. 5 does divide 10, so the theorem does not apply here. And in fact, 10 to the 4th is congruent to 0 mod 5. And this goes on forever. Now, this may seem like a very specific theorem, that it doesn't have a lot of uses because, look, all the exponents are 4. It turns out, though, you can use this in examples when the exponent is something else. Let me show you an example. Let's find the remainder when you divide 3 to the 100,000th power by 53. Now 53 is a prime number, and 53 does not divide 3. So by Fermat's little theorem, we have 3 to the 53 minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod 53 or 3 to the 52nd power is congruent to 1 mod 53. Here's the trick. We're going to raise both sides of the congruence to a power. Now, 1 to any power is 1, so the right-hand side won't change. But the left-hand side, we're going to pick a number so that we get really close to 3 to the 100,000th power. And here's how we find that. We just do straight division. If you divide 100,000 by 52, you get a quotient of 1,923 and a remainder of 4. So we're going to raise both sides of the congruence to the power of 1,923. On the left-hand side, we multiply the exponents and we get 3 to the 99,996th power is congruent to 1 mod 53. We're almost to 100,000 on the left-hand side there. So we're going to multiply both sides of this congruence by 3 to the 4th. That gives us 3 to the 100,000th power is congruent to 81 mod 53. Okay, we can simplify the right-hand side. 81 is congruent to 28 mod 53. So if you divide 3 to the 100,000th power by the prime number 53, you will get a remainder of 28. Let's now prove Fermat's little theorem. And before we give the abstract proof, I'm going to show you an example of how the proof operates so you'll have an intuition for it. So then the, uh, the proof will make much more sense. Consider the prime p equals 7. Every integer is going to be congruent to 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 mod 7. 
Now, let's disregard zero. We're only going to look at the non-zero numbers. Consider the case where a equals 12. Look what happens if we multiply all these numbers by 12. We get 12, 24, 36, 48, 60, and 72. If you simplify these mod 7, you get 5, 3, 1, 6, 4, and 2. Notice it's just a rearrangement of the numbers 1 through 6. That's the trick that that's going to be used, that if you multiply the congruence classes by A, it simply rearranges them. So now let's actually give a formal proof from Oz's little theorem. So again, we assume that P is a prime number, and P does not divide A. Then every integer is congruent to one of the following, 0, 1, 2, on and on up to p minus 1. And as before, we're only going to focus on the non-zero ones because 0 is the congruence class that contains all the multiples of p. And we're interested in numbers which are not divisible by p, which are not multiples of p. So we're only going to consider 1, 2, on and on up to p minus 1. Let's multiply all of these by the integer a. We get a, 2a, on and on up to p minus 1 times a. Now let's show this is nothing more than a rearranging of the congruence classes 1, 2, 3, on and, up to p, on and on up to p minus 1. First, we're going to show that none of these are 0. If one of these were 0, that means p would have to divide it. So suppose r times a was congruent to 0. That means p divides r times a. Well, we know p does not divide a, and p can't divide r because r is less than p. So p cannot divide the product. So none of these are congruent to 0 mod p. Next, let's show that none of these are congruent to each other. So they're all distinct. Now let's show that uh, none of these are equal to one another. So let's pick two different numbers from this list. One is r times a, and the other is s times a. Well, r and s are both greater than 0 and less than p. So we have 0 is less than r is less than p, and 0 is less than s is less than p. What we want to show is r times a is not congruent to s times a mod p. So let's look at r a minus s a, which is equal to a times r minus s. We know p doesn't divide a, so we have to ask, can p divide r minus s? Well, let's go back to our inequalities. We have 0 less than r less than p, and let's multiply the second inequality through by negative 1. That gives us 0 is greater than negative s is greater than negative p. Let's now kind of, let's kind of flip this around so, so the inequalities uh, line up. That gives us 0 is less than r is less than p, and negative p is less than negative s is less than 0. If you add these two together, you get negative p is less than r minus s is less than p. Now, r minus s cannot be 0 because we picked two distinct numbers. And they're between negative p and p, so p cannot divide it. It cannot be a multiple of p. The only multiple of p in that interval is 0. And because we picked distinct numbers, r minus s is not 0. So a, 2a, on and on, to p minus 1 times a is just a rearrangement of 1, 2, 3, on and on to p minus 1. So their products are going to be congruent to each other because they're just rearrangements of one another. That means that a times 2a times 3a on and on to p minus 1 times a is going to be congruent to 1 times 2 times 3 on and on to p minus 1 mod p. The left-hand side is p minus 1 factorial times a to the p minus 1 power. 
and the right hand side of this congruence is p minus 1 factorial. Now p does not divide p minus 1 factorial because p minus 1 factorial is a product of the positive integers less than p. So because p does not divide p minus 1 factorial, we can safely can, uh, cancel it from the congruence. Remember, you cannot cancel a number from the congruence unless it's relatively prime to the modulus. So we can divide both sides by p minus 1 factorial. We can cancel that out, and that gives us a to the p minus 1 power is congruent to 1 mod p. And that proves Fermat's little theorem.